Hello, I'm Adrian and what I've got for you today is some more combining of rhythm and lead guitar in a 12 bar blues kind of a context. And I actually did a lesson fairly similar to this a few months ago and this is more of the same really except we're in a different key and we've got a different feel. And as I said in that lesson I think many guitarists think of rhythm and lead guitar as being these two separate worlds which very rarely come together. Um, whereas I think they're very closely related and it's really wor worth working on this skill of combining the two things. Um, it sounds great, particularly if you're playing on your own and you can kind of provide your own accompaniment. Um, and it's also a really good way of working on many aspects of your playing. I think it massively improves your timing and overall sense of phrasing as well. So it's a really worthwhile thing to, to have a go at. What I've got for you here um, is a piece in the key of A. At the start of the lesson I played three 12 bar choruses. Started off by just laying down some simple rhythm guitar and establishing a groove. And then in the two subsequent choruses I started throwing in some lead guitar licks as well. So you can learn the entire thing note for note or you can just kind of pick and choose the, the bits that you like and pick your favourite bits and learn those. Um, but uh, let's, let's get on with it. So what we're dealing with here is a 12 bar blues in A and it's got a straight eighth note feel. There's no swing involved here and although this piece isn't based on any particular song I suppose at the back of my mind are some of those recordings that Albert King made with uh, Booker T and the MGs backing him up. A lot of those classic songs have a nice sort of straight eighth kind of soulful funky feel to them and uh, I suppose that's what I'm trying to, to go for here. Um, I'm going to talk you through exactly what I played at the start of this lesson. Um, you have to forgive me if there are a few minor discrepancies here and there in, in what I described to you and what I play at the start. It's one of those styles of playing where I find it quite hard to play exactly the same thing twice and it's something I would usually improvise with quite a lot. But uh, what I will do to try and help you is I'll write out the music and the tab to this piece as well. Um, I'll post that on my website. There'll be a link underneath this video and uh, you might want to click on that and follow along with the music as I talk you through it. That will make the whole process a bit easier, I think. Um, now, as I said, um, we've got three 12 bar choruses. In the first 12 bar chorus, I'm just laying down some quite simple rhythm guitar, just establishing a, a groove. And uh, let me take you through the, the chords I'm using to start with. For the, uh, we're in the key of A and for the one chord, uh, I'm using this A7 voicing. Um, so I'm, I'm just, it's a bar chord with a, its root on the 6th string, barring all the way across at the 5th fret, and I'm playing the 7th fret on the A, 6th fret on the G. Um, I'm also playing this 8th fret on the B, it's a, a sort of flat 7 played higher up in the, the voicing, um, which I think has a nice sound. Um, so that's the 1 chord. For the 4 chord, um, D7, and I'm just playing this 5th uh, string root bar chord, uh, bar at the 5th fret and 7th uh, fret on the D, 7th fret on the B as well. And for the 5 chord it's exactly the same shape, 2 frets higher. Um, so chord voicing is uh, fairly simple, fairly standard. Um, the interesting thing here is the rhythm. Um, you know, quite, quite kind of funky and percussive. So um, I'm just going to describe in a little bit of detail what's going on rhythmically in the first bar and then I think once you've cracked that then it's um, it's the same thing throughout most of the, the piece. So um, with, we've got this kind of rhythm. So uh, I'm playing this A7 chord with a down stroke on beat one. And then um, I suppose there's an underlying kind of 16th note feel here. I'm playing on beat one and then I'm playing an upstroke on the, uh, the fourth 16th note of beat one. Um, so if, if you're used to counting your 16th notes as 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a I'm playing down on the 1 and I'm playing up on the A. Uh. So 1 E and A, uh, 2, 3, 4, 1 E and A, uh, 3, 4. Yeah, it helps if you're feeling those 16th notes in your picking hand I think. Um, So that's the first beat. Um, then I'm playing the A7 again with a downstroke on beat two. Three, four, one E and a two, three, four. And on beat two, I'm just, as, as soon as I play the chord, I'm just releasing pressure just to keep it quite short and percussive. You know, I might even be releasing the chord before I play it sometimes, so it's just a, a percussive hit. Three, 
Um, so that's uh, one e and a two. Um, on the and a two, I've just got some uh, muted strings, just another kind of percussive hit. Beat three, I'm playing um, on three and the and of three with down strokes. And again, I'm just sort of bouncing the fingers of my of my fretting hand um, just to get that nice kind of percussive choppy feel. So um, again, on beat four, I've got some percussive hits. And then on the end of four, I'm just squeezing down the chord again, uh, maybe playing some, some of the bass notes in the chord. Um, so the, the main thing here is just sort of keeping your right hand going, getting that feel established. Then you know, I'm sure I, I throw in a few variations here and there um, through, throughout the piece. But if, if you can get that basic feel, um, that's gonna kind of carry you through most of this piece. So uh, one more time, just, just on this, this rhythm of the first bar, it's I think to keep your your uh, your picking hand really loose and relaxed, just so you can get that to groove properly. Uh, so it might take a little bit of work to start with. Once you've cracked it, then uh, you know the whole piece uh, it, it sort of uh, will be fairly easy to sort of slot that into the twelve bar form for the rest of the uh, rest of the piece. So let's do that now. Then I'm, I'm really just going to take that feel now through through a twelve bar chorus. So we've got uh, four bars on the one chord. Change up to the, the four chord, same feel. Back to the one. Uh, the five chord, the E7. Down to the four chord and then back to the one. then for the, the five chord, um, just to turn it around, I'm actually using a different voicing of uh, E7. I'm playing the open low E string and then this kind of C form of, of the E7. So seventh fret on the A, uh, sixth fret on the D, seventh fret on the G and fifth fret on the B. Um, and that, that's really the first, the first chorus. Um, so I'll keep it simple to start with, but then there are lot, lots of variations you could throw into that. You know, I, I quite like just approaching some of those chords from one fret below. So you know, maybe not every time, but just that little sort of side step, one fret below and then coming up into the chord um, is quite a nice effect. Um, and then from the five chord going down to the four, um, you can just fill in the gap between those two, two chords with that little passing chord in the middle. So that's the first chorus. Now I'm going to come on to the second chorus and this is where I start introducing some lead guitar elements and most of these lead licks are taken from the various positions of the A minor pentatonic scale. And the, the first lick is very simple, just goes like this. So we just got 7th fret on the A, 5th fret on the D, back to the 7th fret on the A, and then the 7th fret on the D. And we, we're coming in just ahead of the downbeat here. It's 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1. So we're hitting that A note on the 1. Um, then we're filling in some of the rhythm guitar stuff. Now that the trick when playing in this style is to always just keep counting, keep feeling where you are in the blues form. Um, and then in between the licks, you can just pick up the rhythm guitar in the appropriate place and sort of land on the appropriate chord. So we, with this lick, we've got um, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one. So we can pick up that rhythm guitar on kind of beat two and three. One, two, three. 
Then we've got the next little lead guitar lick. Um, so seventh fret on the A, and then a little triplet, which is five, seven, five on the D, with a hammer on and a pull off. And then back to seven on the A, five on the A, three on the A, maybe giving that a little bit of a bend sharp, and then coming down to the A at the fifth fret on the low E string. So, um, and the timing of that, we're coming in on the uh, the and of uh, two in the second bar of this chorus. So we've got um, one, two. And then we fill in with some more of that rhythm guitar stuff. Um, that's kind of the first four bars of this chorus. So we've got... We're going to the four chord now and we're, we're leading into that with this lick. There's seven on the D, five on the G and playing the seventh fret on the G twice. That's the, the, the D note there, the root, root note of the, of the four chord. Um, filling in some more rhythm guitar in the gaps here. We're on the four chord now, and um, instead of the, the D seventh chord, I'm just using a, a D ninth chord. Um, and that's, uh, you probably know this one already. It's just fifth fret on the A, fourth fret on the D and then fifth fret on the top three strings. I'm just got a little side step down to the, uh, down to the D flat and then back up again. And then another lick. So there I'm, I'm sliding up to the ninth fret on the G, eight on the B, eight on the high E, and then pulling off from 10 to eight on the B, Nine on the uh, on the G, and then down to five on the G. Pull off from seven to five on the G, and then I'm bending the seventh fret on the G, uh, but bending a D up to an E, and, and I'm just cutting that bend off at the top. So just just touching it again with my picking hand or with with the pick itself, just so you don't hear the bend going down. Then we've got more rhythm guitar. Then we're going to hit the five chord, and I'm playing this. Again, I'm just targeting the, the root note of, of the five chord. So sliding up there to that E at the ninth fret on the G string. Eight on B. And then the ninth fret uh, on the G three more times. Then kind of going down from the five chord to the four there, just using that ninth shape. And then the final lick for this chorus is just, it's a seventh fret on the D, and then a, another of these triplets, five, seven, five uh, on, on the G with a hammer on and a pull off, back to seven on the D, five, and then pulling off from seven to five, and then playing seven again, so. Couple more hits on the A7, and then to turn it around. Uh, this time for the five chord, I'm using, uh, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the old Hendrix chord, really. It's the, uh, the seventh sharp nine. So uh, I've got the open low E, and then seventh fret on the A, six on the D, seven on the G, Eight on the uh, on the B. Uh, I might even just be pressing down the eighth fret on the high E as well, which which gives you that sharp five. So it's a kind of seven uh, uh, sharp nine and a sharp five as well. That's the second chorus. Um, let me just play through that slowly. Um, I mean, nothing particularly tricky going on there. I think the tricky thing will just be the timing. Um, you're feeling where you are in the form, coming into and out of these licks in the right place. So do, do take your time with that. You know, slow it right down, count it out if necessary, um, 
and uh, yeah, the music might help you here if you sort of look at the rhythm rhythm notation above the tab and uh, see if you can figure out what's going on that way. So let me take you through the whole of this chorus quite slowly then. One, two, three. <laughs> chorus then and it starts like this uh, we're kind of going up a bit higher now with this lick so playing the 10th fret on the B 8th fret on the high E back to the 10th fret on the B and then bending the 10th fret on the high E bending that upper tone from uh, D to E and once again, I'm stopping that bend at the top, so you're not going to hear that bend coming down. I'm just going to touch, touch the bent note with my uh, my picking hand or with my pick. Um, um, then I'm filling in the gap with some more of this uh, A7 groove. Next lick is in a similar part of the neck, so 10th um, fret on the B, another bend 10th fret on the top string, 8 to 10 on the top string, then I've got this kind of pre-bend on the top string, so I'm bending that 10th fret note up um, and I'm not picking it until I'm at the top of the bend. Um, then I'm playing the 8th fret on the top string, probably just pushing that slightly sharp and then playing that A note there at uh, the 10th fret on the B, so... There's one and two... Um, then more of the uh, A7 groove. Then we're, we're going into the, the four chord with this. And um, that's outlining outlining the change up to the four chord there so I'm just playing I'm sliding into the 11th fret on the G then the 10th fret on the B playing those two notes again and coming back to the 11th fret on the G um, and that's nicely signaling the four chord there because we're, we're kind of targeting the, the third and the fifth of that chord Then we're filling in some more of the space with uh, with some rhythm guitar here. The D9 voicing again I'm using there for the four chord. Um, nice little lick here, P playing a little bit faster now. Um, um, and what we've got there is uh, five, eight on the B string, pulling off to five. Then pulling off from seven to five on the B string. Then eight, seven on the G, pulling off to five. Then seven on the D, seven on the G, back to seven on the uh, D. And then just a little slide from five to six on the G. The, the timing on that is one, two, tricky I think we're coming in um, on the uh, the second sixteenth of, of beat two so it's one E and a two E and a one E so something along along those lines um, so and that's taking us back to the one chord We're going into the five chord with this lick. Um, this is a kind of a Albert King style lick, really. It's just tenth fret on uh, the B, thirteenth fret, 
back to the 10th fret, then we're bending 13th fret on the B. And, and it's, it's one of these kind of overbent notes, so we're just kind of pushing it up as, as far as it will go, really. I'm filling in some chords now. We're going from the, uh, the 5 chord uh, down to the 4 chord. And instead of using these ninth chord voicing, I'm kind of playing the same notes um, higher up the neck on the next set of strings. So this is an E9 here. That's uh, 11th fret on the A, 12 on the D, 11 on the G, 12 on the B. And I'm just taking that down um, a couple of frets to the uh, to the D9. So. Um, Last couple of licks now, we've got this. Um, um. So we're up here into the uh, kind of 13th position, I suppose. We've got 14th fret on the G, 13th fret on the B, back to the 14th fret on the G, and then another pre bend here, bending the 15th fret on the B string, then I'm picking it. Releasing the bend and pulling off to the 13th fret. Then playing the 14th fret on the uh, G. 13 to 15 on the B. Back to the 14th fret on the G. So that lick is... One and two. And then just a little turnaround lick um, to, to end things off. Um, although it's, <laughs> I suppose it's not really turning around here. I, I suppose it's an ending lick, more, more strictly speaking. Um, which uh, go, goes like that. So we've got... Um, so uh, hammer on from five to six on the G. Um, fifth fret on the B and then the E. And then pulling off from 8 to 5 on the B, 8 on the G, 5 on the B, and then 8, 7, 5 on the G, just pulling off from 7 to 5, 7 on the uh, D, and then 5 on the uh, G. Um, I might just be pulling that sharp or perhaps hammering on to the, to the 6th fret there, I can't remember. Um, Fairly classic sort of turnaround or or ending lick, um, and since this is the final chorus, I'm going into an ending, which is um, just taking this kind of seventh chord shape up one fret at a time. So that's G seven, B six, high E seven. Um, just moving that shape up one fret at a time um, until we reach that chord there, which is kind of an a7 sound. So I should probably just play that through for you quite slowly so you can hear how it all fits together and also hear the timing properly. So one and two and three. So there we have it. As always, I hope you enjoy learning to play this piece. And if you have enjoyed this lesson, do check out some of the other videos on my channel. Maybe go and look at my website as well, where you can find many more lessons um, in blues style and in a whole range of other styles as well. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.